Well guys, today we're going to talk about this thing. It's called the Bank Manager. It's from uh, Emily and Clark's Adventures. They've got a YouTube channel, Facebook page, website, you can order stuff. They designed this system where you can hook lithium, iron phosphate, and lead acid batteries into the same bank. And that flickering screen is just an artifact of the video. The screen doesn't actually flicker when you're looking at it. But what this thing does is it controls a contactor that disconnects the lithium bank from the rest of the system when it's unsafe and connects it back up when it is safe to have them connected together. That's essentially what it does. And we'll talk about how it does that in a second. First, we're going to talk about what kind of system I'm running this on. We have a Xantrex 6048 inverter that's 10, 12 years old that has never even heard of lithium batteries. This thing was built when lithium was uh, very rare and nobody was building the actual uh, software into their inverters to charge them correctly. We've got a Contax MPPT 6150 solar charge controller hooked into the system. And we just, uh, we've had for a long time these Enersys gel cell batteries, or AGM batteries. These are really good batteries. They're 100 amp hour AGM batteries, and they've got something like 1100 cold cranking amps. So they're very powerful. They're good for running big loads. But we've only got eight of them. So what we did a while back was we purchased some lithium to add on top of it. The lead acid bank is 200 amp hour. The lithium bank is 400 amp hour. So we didn't just triple our uh, capacity because lead acid you can only use about 50% of your capacity so of that 200 amp hours we're only using about 100 the yeah the lithium batteries we can use about 80 to 90% of the advertised capacity okay so in, instead of 400 amp hours which is what they're rated for we can get 80% of that so that's like 320 amp hours off of them and I don't have the watt hours right in front of me, but we use these this solid copper bar as bus bars here. Just drilled holes in it, lined it up. We use these lead time 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries with 100 amp BMSs in them. They were cheap. We paid $204 for the like new batteries. We balanced them and charged them all up before we put them in the system. And tying them together with these. The uh, copper bars wasn't exactly straightforward because there's some uh, inconsistencies in the manufacturing that means these posts on each battery are in different spots. So it took a little bit to get that figured out. But we've got these solid copper bars tying four batteries in parallel and then tying them in series. So we have a 4S, 4P or 4P, 4S uh, configuration. So basically, as far as the inverter or anything else is concerned, we have four 400 amp hour 12 volt batteries connected together in series to 48 volts. So we have a 400 amp hour 48 volt system. From the negative bar, we come down here to this solid copper bus bar that we've attached to the table here and it's got insulating standoffs to keep it from uh, dumping current into the wood. I don't know that that's even a uh, concern at 48 volts but just in case it is we don't know how many amps this is going to end up pulling and we don't want to set anything on fire. So we've got the cable coming from there down here to the negative side on the lead acid batteries. Then you come over here to the positive side and that's where all the interesting stuff happens. So we did the same thing. We've got the cables coming down here to this bus bar 
and the cable that goes to the positive side of the lead battery bank goes through first this Hall Effect sensor and that's what the bank manager uses to monitor the amperage going in and out of the lithium system. From there that cable comes around here to this 48 volt contactor. That 48 volt contactor is what isolates the lithium battery from the lead acid battery. So on this side of the contactor is the lithium positive. Over here on this side of the contactor is the lead acid positive. So that's what controls whether we are tied in together or we're disconnected. What this thing does, and we just hooked it up, so I'm not vouching for it yet. It seems like a pretty awesome product, but it's just been hooked up. It's as yet untested. But what it does, or advertises to do, is it monitors the current coming in and out of these batteries, and it shows that on the screen. So right now it says negative 17.4 amps. That means that these are discharging 17 amps. We're drawing off of these batteries right now. And our inverter says we're using 800 watts. 0.8 kilowatt. So that monitors the amps and it monitors the voltage of both battery banks. But when they're tied together, it's only going to show you one battery bank because they're tied together and there's no voltage difference in them. This thing will, when it's charging, it charges the lithium iron phosphate batteries first. And the way it does that is through the chemistry, the natural chemistry of the lithium iron phosphate. Lithium iron phosphate has a lower internal resistance than lead acid. So when the entire system is connected together, when that contactor is turned on, Power is going into these because it has a lower internal resistance. So if you picture a water system and you're filling up two tanks, one tank has a low pressure inlet and the other tank has a high pressure inlet. You picture which tank's going to fill up first. Obviously it's going to be the one with the low pressure. That's exactly how this works. The charge goes to the lithium first. Once the lithium has reached 100%, this thing knows, because we put in the amp hours in the bank, it knows what 100% charge is. It doesn't need to float, it doesn't need to absorb like lead acid batteries do, so it will disconnect these batteries from the system. And from there, this inverter charger is back to just charging the lead acid exactly the way it always has. When the lead acid is full, the generator shuts off, and then we are at probably a slight voltage differential. These things are 13.3, 13.4 when they're full. Lead acid is going to be somewhere close to there, but they might be a little over that when after, right after they've absorbed, and it takes them a little bit to settle out. So initially, they're going to say something like 14 volts. A few minutes have gone by and the 14 volts has dissipated down to 13.3 volts which is what the lithium is set at and as soon as we hit 13.3 volts this contactor connects both systems back together now we have lithium battery banks keeping the lead acid battery bank at a float voltage which is where they want to be they're tied together. These are 13.3 and they will stay 13.3 until they are almost dead. This is the product manual for these lead time batteries. And in here, first we have a charging curve. This, this demonstrates why they can't be connected together, the lithium and the lead, during normal charging. Because this is the lead acid battery charging curve. And lead acid batteries charge at a certain current, current, the voltage ramps up through an absorption phase, and then it goes to float, and it stays at float for a long time to get the batteries to 100% state of charge.
Lithium does not have that float curve here. It can have a little bit of a, a, a ramp down period. See, this is CVT T2. And this is constant voltage phase 2. The battery maintains constant voltage during this phase while the current gradually decreases to 2 amps. This thing will monitor that. When it the current has decreased enough, this thing knows they are full, it will disconnect them. And then the charging curve for the lead acid batteries can take over. Now if we go to two page just further, we get this chart that shows us the state of charge. And we can see here that all the way down at 10% state of charge, we're at basically 13 volts. What that means is that these batteries never drop below the float voltage of the AGM batteries. So these are what is being used and they are keeping the AGM batteries at their float voltage. But since we're tied together, if there is a huge load, say we turn on this well while somebody inside is running the microwave and the toaster. We have a lot of amps going through this inverter and we need a little extra help because of the BMS and these lithium batteries can't quite handle it. These have their 1100 cold cranking amps per battery that will kick in and help. So the lead acid batteries stay healthy because they are at a constant state of charge. They last much, much longer because it's basically like keeping them on a battery maintainer for their whole life. These get extra help when there's a high current application. So the theory is that both banks, the lithium and the lead, are happier together than they would be otherwise. So that's... That's what we think is going to happen. We just hooked this thing up. I mean last night. But normally those the lead batteries are dead in 6 hours. I mean we've been going on 15 hours and this thing says we're at 42.41% state of charge. Which is great. That's They're lasting way longer. But once this gets down low enough that these are dead... That's going to disconnect the lithium from the lead. If we have the voltage set on this thing to allow it to get that far. But what we're going to do is we have set on set this inverter, the voltage, to somewhere around 50 volts. That's about 12.5 volts per battery. If it gets down to 12.5 volts per battery, it'll start the generator. And it shouldn't ever kick over to the lead by itself. And as soon as the generator chart starts, the charging starts. And this thing knows, remember I said it's got a negative amperage? That will switch to a positive amperage. And it knows that there's current going into the batteries. It knows it's charging. As soon as it knows it's charging, it starts paying attention to the state of charge. And when it reaches 100%, it'll disconnect. So let's talk about this thing and how the menu works. It's got this little knob. When it's operating, there's nothing you can do. That knob does nothing. It's working. It's set. There's no settings you can change while it's running. If I push this knob, do you hear that click? That contactor has disconnected these lith lithium batteries from the battery bank. That's like an emergency shutoff. And this tiny little screen. I don't have a very good macro lens on my phone, so let's see if we can get it in focus. Okay, it gives us menu options. We've got lithium bank size, reset full battery, max full battery voltage. We can select what voltage we want the bank to be at when it's full. We can select our contactor type. We've got it set to monostable, which is where we want it. 
we can set the max amps we want drawing off of these batteries before it kicks over to uh, lead. And I haven't messed with this setting. It's set to 2550 amps. So we're going to leave it there. Then min minimum POC, minimum percent of charge. We ha That setting is turned off from the factory. We've got sensor type. It says 200 amp sensor. You can factory reset. You can resume operation. What this thing is set at is we'll charge these to 100% in this charge to setting at the top. Set to 100% or you can set it to any percentage you want. Say you want to store them, you want to set it at 50% because that's good storage voltage for lithium. And those are your options. But I've showed you guys the basically how this thing works working principle on it. I showed you basically what has to be connected. You have a positive lead that goes to the lead bank. You've got a positive lead that goes to the lithium bank. You've got a lead that goes to the ground that's tied in together. And you've got the Hall effect sensor that's tied in and the contactor. And that's all this system uses to use both of those battery banks in the same system. And that's all I've got for you today. If you have any questions about how I set up my system, uh, go ahead and ask me. I'm not a professional, but I've been working with this particular system for about 10 years, 10, 12 years since we bought it. So I know quite a bit about it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And uh, I'll link the uh, Emily and Clark's bank manager in the description and you guys can go check them out. I'll link their YouTube channel so you can go look at their videos. Um, other than that, y'all have a good day.